All right. Good morning, everybody. Happy Friday. Good to see you again, or to have you again. Um, so it uh, it's been a rough week. It's been a long week. Uh, we really have all gone through a lot of different things. Um, so I wanted to kind of start pivoting uh, from creature to creator. So this is class number five. And now, uh, basically what we've gone through in the last four classes, we're going to be able to start putting it together. So let's not waste any time. So if you, uh, just to recap, um, we started off class one talking about all of the change that is happening. And uh, because of all this change, emotionally, it makes us have to try to create new predictions about what's going to happen. A lot of us, we don't know what's going to happen, so that uncertainty makes us feel fa uh, fear. And that fear almost threatens our lives. It threatens what we feel inside, and it doesn't make us feel safe. And uh, none of us want to experience that because that's part of who we are. We do things for safety. We do things so that we can be okay, because life is always creating for, for growth, right? And so, um, as we've been experiencing that, we've noticed all of the changes from, you know, school, from having to get to work, uh, how we're gonna feed our children, uh, even maybe some boredom, stress, anxiety about not having those daily comforts and all of those feelings come simply because on the inside, we're not okay. And it's okay to not feel okay. I want to make that clear because um, as we've gone through the last couple of days, we started talking about where that actually comes from when we look at the brain. Okay, so in order to continue, you know, we spoke about the rapid speed of change, right? I've, I've taken the liberty to take some notes so that we can all kind of keep things clear. Um, but we spoke about, you know, that lack of stability, you know, that we've lost it and it's kind of not there how we're so used to having it. Uh, we've, you know, we've been taken out of place, you know, considering that we are creatures of comfort, you know, we enjoy the things that make us feel like everything is okay, right? We've taken months, maybe even years to plot every moment of every day out of a lot of other headaches. Do you remember those mornings where you got those headaches? or those mid-afternoons when you got those headaches, you learn from all of that, right? And that's what we do. We're here to learn from our feelings, right? And, and so uh, what's happening is that from the outside with all this coronavirus pandemic, it's making us change everything. We don't have access to the normal things we have access to. So it's making us have to create new predictions and they always come from an emotional place. So before we're ever going to decide if something is healthy or if something is unhealthy, if something is appropriate or not appropriate, it, it always comes from a place of safety. It always comes from a place of comfort. Like, how can I feel good about this and where can I feel the best in moving forward? Does that make sense? So in the second class, we started talking a little bit about um, the different kind of feelings that you know, this, this unpredictable market or situation has created in us. We started talking about how if something is not predictable, um, then that means it makes us feel, you know, anxiety and fear. And if we can't define it because we are don't we we were not aware of the outcome or we there's too many unknowns, uh, it makes us feel unsafe. And so that's what's difficult about the situation is that most of us, probably all of us, have never taken up an emotional intelligence practice. There are no masters in emotional intelligence. Only people with regular practice. That's it. Like there's no supreme bodybuilder. There's just people that work out and live healthy lives. There's no, you know, super anything. It's just people with a regular practice. And the reason why we have to practice is because we're getting hit with all this rapid information, right? We're seeing um, you know, uh patterns and things that we've never seen before and that displaces us on the inside and now our feelings have to try to guess out of the maybe five or eight feelings we all use and it's a little deeper than that and it's a little bit more nuanced than that and we have to really break it down to help our brain process this information so we're not in constant panic mode right and so we spoke about that in class two um, 
you know, that uh, social media is also not making things better. There's a lot of talk about, you know, people spreading rumors and martial law and all this. Guys, you're not doing anybody any favors by spreading fear. We understand that you may not even understand where that's coming from. And that's the reason why we at Creative Emotional Intelligence decided to give ourselves away. Because we know how important it is for everybody to begin learning little by little how these feelings and how these emotions are made on the inside so that with a little bit of insight, you're able to make better decisions with your community. Everybody's now in charge to be a leader. You realize that? And so if, if, if in our niches where we are, we're, we're leading for destruction, we're not doing anybody any favors just to try to get some attention. So let's try to maybe step away from that and recognize our new position. We are now, we're not creatures of panic and death and life. We are creators. It is our job to find better outcomes. We've done it as men, we've done it as cavemen, and then we've done it through the industrial period. I know I missed about maybe 20,000 years there, but there's just so much things and th evolution that we've undergone as human beings that now we're being challenged again, but it's the challenge is on the inside, and most of us for the last 20, 30 years have not been prepared. So me asking you to come and, and do this with us, it doesn't feel good. You're saying no because your feelings that make you angry because of change, and we spoke about this yesterday, uh, because we don't like when people change our plans, and it's not me changing your plans. I'm trying to help you to change you for the better because so much more change is coming that if we're not constantly changing, we're going to constantly be breaking. And that breaks my heart. It really, really does. You know, as the founder and creator of Creative Emotional Intelligence, I only know this stuff because I've had to do this stuff. So I had to create a lot of this stuff and put it together, which we haven't gone through any of it, and really test it to see if it works. And it has really, really, really saved my life. It's, it's made a world of a difference because now I can explain those things to you. If you were in our class yesterday, in my, just off the top of my head, I must have gone through 25 different feelings. Easy, because that helps me explain it to you because I've had to do it for myself and I wasn't taught either. So I've been in your shoes. I know what it's like not to even want to change or to have feelings because we'd rather just have everything laid out in front of us. But now everything's been shifted and now if we don't shift on the inside with the thing that makes all of everything mean anything, it's our feelings. Our feelings, they give meaning to everything. So think of one thing that means everything to you or something that doesn't have a feeling. Even air, you feel it. Fire, you feel it, you put your hand on top of it. Think of one thing that means, because fire we need to cook. Fire we need to purify, right? Air we need to cool down and to breathe, right? So. Even from the aspects of nature, we can feel these things. So if, you're, if you love your mother, you love her because you trust her, because she's been there, or maybe you don't. But again, there's so many nuances now that because life is so involved and so heavily in all these unpredictable outcomes, we have to help our brain, right? So if you weren't with us, the reptilian brain, which I've made a point of just making this little black dot, it doesn't understand itself. It just knows death and no death. It only knows survival. It only knows instinct. It, it's not even aware of itself. It's connected to your, you know, your spinal column. So it, it's connected to your body. So if you're feeling, you know, uh, symptomatic, if, if you're if you're feeling things in your body, um, you know, that are coming from that, it's it's a cause for concern. Number two is your mammalian brain, which evolved or more or less around the same time, which helps you understand what you're actually feeling. But it, it, it's still kind of nuanced. And, and this is kind of where our feelings for anger or sadness, a mother's instinct to love her children, our social bonding, this has now been taken away from us a little bit. Can you see why the reptilian brain is acting up? Because it's threatened right now and it doesn't feel safe. All this change makes it feel uncertain. And when we can't feel certain, meaning comforted, meaning predictable, meaning good, um, then it's not so good. And we have to now help our brain with using our neocortex, which is the latest aspect of our brain that we've developed, help it by redefining these emotional states. Because 
only thing that matters. If we feel good on the inside by understanding ourselves, that's what the brain's always looking to do. If you look at whenever you get cut or whenever you feel bad and you go to sleep, you always kind of wake up better. The cut always heals. What does that mean? That means that the brain is always looking for homeostasis. Homeostasis is balance. It's always searching and looking for balance. And now, because emotions aren't on the outside, they're on the inside, we have to tune ourselves. So that is our job to help ourselves tune ourselves using our neocortex so we can begin to shift away from this corona complex which has definitely affected all of us. It's given us all new things to think about and things to wonder but now we have to create new routines and we have to create new practices because clearly our, the tools we were, we were using in the past, they don't serve us anymore. You know what I mean? So in this situation, for instance, if we just look at the six core feelings, if we look at, you know, joy, anger, sadness, disgust, fear, and surprise, now you're actually being challenged to define how does your joy express itself and how does your anger express itself? How does your sadness express itself? How does your disgust express itself? How does your fear express itself? And how does surprise express itself? Surprise is also amazing, but also confusion. So surprise has both. So I'll write a two there, because it has both good and, fat, good and bad, if you want to look at it that way. And so how? How does your joy come out? How does your anger come out? Is it, is it in a positive way? Meaning creative? Or is it, it, or is it in a negative way? which is destructive. So when you, so joy, maybe with your family, right? So family, bonding, that, that's good. And I'm not trying to take anything away from anyone. We're just trying to find out what's the healthiest route, what's the most creative route, because we are not creatures anymore. We're not just living off instinct, which is what our reptilian brain has done to keep us alive for the last you know, 20,000 years. That's how we got here. Literally by instinct, literally by surviving, literally by overcoming. But now we have data and numbers and, and you know, mustard stuff. Like if you've ever seen Wolf of Wall Street, like they just talk about these, this, 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 all this stuff. And it's just not good for any of us because it's too much. We have to stay relaxed. And part of this relaxation is what we do with our recollection of the six core feelings that we know we have. So in anger, what do you do there? If in anger, you yell, well, th well, that's not very creative. Now we, have to, now we have to teach our neocortex brain new tools, new tools and new ways on how to express that, you know, anger, usually it comes from pain, really, so it, it hurts, it hurts to be angry. And how to express that pain in a positive way because we're trying to be more positive. We're trying to create more positive outcomes because we're trying to give the reptilian brain a sensation that everything's fine. Yes, there's a moment of fear, but watch what I do with this fear, uh, reptilian brain. I've learned that I can do this for it. And as it's doing it, it, lo it loves you for knowing what to do. It loves it when you're responsible. It loves it when, when, when it feels safe. And if you're taking action, and if you're taking initiative, and if you are moving in a positive way with your feelings and transforming them to new ways of expression, you know, when sadness comes, what are you doing with sadness? I mean, if you cry sometimes because of the overwhelm, that, I would say that's healthy. But, you know, that is our physiological way of expressing that. We, as creators... We can burn a fire deep that when you feel deep sadness, or maybe even sadness and anger, who knows? But I can't know for you. You have to come on this journey with me so you can start finding what your patterns are. And as you start defining your patterns, you know, you might do this once a week. Once a week. And maybe a month later, you'll start recognizing, you know what? Fear and sadness are really the ones. 
Because now I've realized that in fear, you know, I have anxiety, which is where, where anxiety lives in fear, and I also have overwhelm. And so I know that I feel fear pretty quite often. I, I don't know. For you, that may be the case. You know, for me, it was actually anger. For me, it was actually anger and disgust. Those were my big ones. You know, and I'll get into those. So in sadness, what do you do? How, how are you expressing this sadness in a positive and creative way? Because that is our challenge. As we transform ourselves from creature, which is the little instinctual brain that doesn't know what to do, that's constantly afraid of everything and death, and no death, into using our full brain, which is our mammalian brain, to give it context, and in our neocortex and prefrontal cortex, to start defining all these new tools and all these new ideas, and really becoming one with it, so you can become inspired to move in... in, in uh, move in a way that is actually positive and creative for you. So you're using your full brain and you're using your full sense of feeling so that in this moment of all this uncertainty, you're creating certainty for yourself. You may not know what's happening with the world, but in this moment as I'm writing my poem, I, I know this is coming out beautiful. And that's important because you're important. You know? So... I don't want to go more into this. I think we can go possibly more into this. Maybe tomorrow I can do a number two from Creature to Creator Part 2 where we'll dive in a little bit deeper about some of the suggestions that I can you know, offer in terms of this. But even if I start offering them, if you haven't defined your own emotional patterns and looked at them over a period of time, how do you know what feelings you feel most intense? And how do you know you're not wrong? Because a lot of times... When I've done this for myself, I thought I was angry, but when I actually did the whole thing, I was afraid, and I was sad, actually. So my predictions from not looking at it on paper were most of the time wrong. 65% of the time, and, and I teach this stuff, 65% of the time I was wrong as I was learning to do this for myself. Because I needed to do this. Because I have been diagnosed with chronic depression. I have been diagnosed with general anxiety disorder. I have been diagnosed with PTSD and stressor-related trauma. From being a Marine and having screws in my face. And all this stuff that I've overcome. And I've only overcome it by applying my emotions and my feelings in a way that has been positive. To transform my own creature. My own instinctual uncertainty. Because everything was af I was afraid of everything. And... Oh, I couldn't interact with people and I didn't understand how to do that and I just stayed maybe creating and that always produced a positive outcome and we're all just looking for more positive outcomes in our lives. If we can't control what the president is doing, I can control what I'm doing. If I can't control what my kids are doing, I can control what I'm doing because my kids, they're five and they're eight and they're 12 and they know how to be happy. Like you don't got to tell them nothing. They, they have imagination that you maybe or wish you had right now and have inspiration that they're so connected to that you know would be nice right because for them they they live in this world and they know what to do and they take their feelings and then they create castles and then and then they create this and, but you and I because we've started thinking so much and never about feelings we've kind of we've lost connection it's been severed now we have to kind of heal that we have to stitch that back up and come together again so, in this moment, I know I went a little bit long. Creative emotional intelligence is not something that, you know, it's, it's, little, you know that, that, that it's just easily understood because it's a practice. But hopefully by explaining it to you, you're starting to put the pieces together. If you haven't seen the last videos for day one, day two, day three, and day four, you know, I would ask you to please go back, look at some of those videos, and see kind of where we've come so that we can get here so that if you decide this is something that, you know, I, I maybe failed to disclose the, the importance and the necessity of, and you decide that this is something that is, we have to learn from because every opportunity comes from a challenge. And in this moment, we're all being challenged by all of the change. And if this change doesn't make us better, you know, then maybe what we're going to, maybe what we might yell more, or maybe we might drink more alcohol and waste away our, our, our inner power. Or, you know, maybe we might do drugs because we're angry and we're so displaced. Or maybe with sadness, we might cut ourselves. I know I've done that. I know with sadness, you know, awful things can happen, especially when you start mixing sadness and disgust. Disgust is disapproval. It's disapproval. It's not approving of yourself. 
Disgust is judgment. That's when you judge yourself super harshly. You know, also in anger you have critical. So if you're critical, and again, I only know these words because these are, I'm sharing with you my patterns. So if my patterns relate to you, it's because I understand what you're going through and I know it's not easy. My patterns look a lot like this. In disgust, I was disapproval because I couldn't stand myself. And when these guys would all get together, oh my goodness, I... Some of the worst days I've ever had, but I'm still alive. not easy but but it's necessary because if we take this opportunity to channel what we're going through the baby we can come out better you know with this anxiety and this overwhelm and this fear that we're all going through it's very difficult and our children are suffering because we're not together because no one's ever taught us this kind of stuff. And we don't know that in surprise, you know, we have confusion. I'm sharing with you my patterns. Um, you know, and out of this confusion, you also have, you know, moments of amazing, of amazement and grace. And out of that, you get open and joy and you get inspired. This is all in joy. In, in, in the world of joy, you get open, you get inspired. You have enthusiasm. You have... Oh my goodness, you have liberation. Are we all looking for liberation? It's there, it's right here. But we have to be able to be constructive with our pain, which is most of it, so that we can express ourselves in a positive way. Positive way. We deserve that, you deserve that. And I hope that in, in this class, uh, you're walking away with something. We hope that you'll continue to join us and, and be a part of this. I want to do this for you. I want to help you. I want to be your leader. I want to show you the way in the way that it's helped me because I've been through the worst things in human experience and I'm still alive because of the grace of God, number one, and number two, because of the power that I possess for emotional creativity and creative emotional intelligence. Thank you, guys. Um, I'll see you tomorrow morning at 930.